hypoxia in contemporary world as a prevalent for uh, far modern medical science recognizes. Hypoxia is the scenario where cells can't get enough oxygen, which is caused by blood delivering oxygen at a rate lower than normal. Note, oxygen carrying capacity is different from oxygen delivery rate. If anemia free, your blood most likely carries sufficient amount of oxygen. However, it doesn't necessarily mean cells in your body readily get sufficient amount of oxygen accordingly. Almost 100% of oxygen is carried by the red blood cells, RBC for short. RBCs unload oxygen only while they are inside the capillary vessel and accomplish their mission of oxygen delivery. The problem is that the diameter of RBC is larger than the lumen diameter of a capillary. How can larger RBC enter inside the smaller tube of a capillary? The answer is that RBC fully deforms itself and squeezes into capillary, like a fully deflated balloon, uh, which can be squeezed to any small uh, form at any small size, like this. This balloon has a, a significantly large di diameter, and this tube is a far smaller in diameter. With a deformation, this balloon enters the smaller tube and exits at the other end. By the same mechanism, RBCs get inside the capillary. Once inside, RBC has large surface area contacted with the capillary wall, creating friction force, which impedes movement of RBC, creating sufficient time for RBC to unload oxygen. Problem is, what if RBC is rigid, like this balloon, which is less flexible? See, it can't squeeze inside the tube at all. Similarly, the rigid RBCs can't enter the capillary and have no chance at all unloading oxygen. Take a look at this image. This vessel is called arterial. This branch thoroughfare, and this, these branches, capillaries. Blood flows in this direction, some of which is sunted into this thoroughfare. And those RBCs with good flexibility in the blood is forced to squeeze inside the capillary by blood pressure. And once inside the capillary, oxygen is released almost spontaneously. And those rigid RBCs without any chance getting inside the capillary, together with the oxygen, flow directly to venule and get back to the heart. That is like a fully loaded truck arriving at the destination and without unloading cargo, simply returning to the starting point. Even worse, these rigid RBCs keep flowing in their circulation ceaselessly, but never unload the oxygen they carry. When the number of rigid RBCs is significant, your body suffers from hypoxia. Therefore, remember, anemia-free doesn't guarantee hypoxia-free. Since all kinetic energy comes from our heart, the more number of rigid RBCs in our blood, the more burden our heart takes. That's supposed to be the major reason for heart-related diseases, like hyper hypertrophy. Flexibility is a totally, uh, flexibility of uh, RBC is totally ignored by clinical practice. Only few people in the physio physiology research field know it. Uh, what factors do cause RBCs rigid? Hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, and free radicals are three major classes of factors decreasing flexibility of RBCs. 
While glucose level or lipid level gets strung back to normal, the flexibility of RBCs recovers on its own. But the rigidity caused by free radicals remains intact, even if free radicals disappear. Therefore, free radicals are most harmful. Exhaustion, fatigue, overindulgence, mental stress, harmful food, lack of sleep, hypoxia, and so on, cause production of free radicals. Note, hypoxia itself promotes production of free radicals. Accordingly, all factors causing RBCs rigid, including hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia, among others, indirectly promote production of free radicals, which cause RBCs rigid, which in turn cause hypoxia. See, in present world, there are hypoxia-causing factors permeated all over in our lifestyle and the workplace. Now, I think you believe that hypoxia is rather prevalent far more than we thought. Therefore, hypoxia is very likely the root cause for obesity and type 2 diabetes. Now, we turn to regulation of insulin and glucagon put on hypoxia perspective. 